Okay, so welcome everyone. Um, I'm Paul Yuto with Human Turn. Yeah, there you go. Um, Lane is disappearing behind the. <laughs> Hi. <laughs> here for a minute. Um, yeah, we both right. work uh, with Hub's Tech Data Team, um, which is well, obviously part of Hub's inception more or less. Um, we started out as a bit of a bracket bunch of uh, people with like vague tech vision and how we could embed OpenStreetMap in human care response, crisis, disaster, etc. And it's going to be quite a sizable uh, NGO with a big range of, of tools that I think most of you will have heard of at some point, has commend your head, which is the most well-known one in the range of ours. Uh, today we're going to be speaking a bit about, um, uh, quickly uh, share a couple of use cases of work, is this, this data and these tools, what are actually being used by organizations? Uh, the type of work we do, just to give you a bit of a, uh, an introduction back on that. And then Lane is going to explain a bit about where do we see the big gaps and challenges in the, the current tech, the tech and data ecosystem uh, around um, the, the human term use of, of data, geospatial data, and how do we intend to be uh, back stopping uh, those. So, with that, uh, first a couple of examples. Um, one of the big. Oh, there's more, oh, um, use cases or areas that work in is human care response. Um, uh, a lot of that is refugee response. Um, we don't necessarily work inside areas of conflict ourselves much um, um, for, for I think somewhat obvious reasons around data protection and security. Um, if you create open data, it will aid any and all combatants and parties in the conflict. Um, we just have to be really careful what data we contribute in those situations. Much more of our work focuses on kind of the, the fringes and the effects and the of, of context, so that's rocket deep crisis, uh, human terror response, etc. So we work quite a bit with uh, organizations like you know, the Science Health and Care, Doctors of Our Borders, uh, but also UNHCR, IOM, REACH, on helping them to, um, uh, on the one, I get a good overview for coordination purposes of the, 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 the camp settings, who's there, uh, what they're rising from, what are the services that will be provided to refugees in terms of shelter, foods, uh, markets, etc., and how uh, public health help us, etc., and how can we help those services become more effective and ensure there's a good common operating view of the situation. And if you work in human care response in, in some capacity, you know it's often very fragmented. Uh, there's a lot of organizations they often don't know very well what the other one is doing, especially if they're in a different cluster, a different sector of work. Um, so, what we try to do is establish at least a common view of your reality, so people can actually coordinate much more effectively. Uh, this is an example from Chad. Um, in the past, we've also done a lot of work in Uganda around the South, around South Sudanese with the response. Uh, recently, we did a bunch of work in Kakuma, Kenya, uh, and we're actually working with IOM to make us broader efforts on ensuring there's good place and data for any and all refugee and um, IDE, so enjoying these displaced people uh, camps across the world. So that's one very important sector of work. Um, another is disaster response, which is, I think, what HUD is most well known for. Um, by far the biggest uh, response we've had in the past couple of years is the Turkey Syria earthquake of last year. Um, and in this case, it was a bit of a tricky ecosystem since in Turkey, um, geospatial data is very tightly governed by the military. Um, uh, what ended up happening is we did a lot of work on filling out the baseline data of the affected populations and areas. Um, and this was directly um, incorporated into the maps, the operational maps of search and rescue agencies like Ahud and Ahud in Turkey, um, which they couldn't go directly freely because then they get in trouble with the ministry. <laughs> but they send us a lot of links and videos and etc. to let, just let everyone know and be appreciative of all the work that we've done to, to assist them. Um, so, also drone imagery plays quite a huge role in that. Uh, there were a lot of scenes contributed to OEM um, of that were helping in damage assessment and assessing the, the state of the uh, lake. Uh, a very different angle is that much more kind of been grounded in community support. So, if you talk about kind of the, the broad areas of work, one is human care response and disaster response. The other is much more in um, working with communities to generate the types of data that they need to provide evidence, support, advocacy for their living conditions, advocate for that, um, for investments, for interventions by the governments, uh, by the world bank, etc. Um, so we're currently working, uh, actually quite a nice collaboration with SDI, Long Borders International, um, 
convert into the living conditions of uh, people in slums or informal settlements in, in what I speak. Uh, <laughs> and help them generate and create and collect data themselves on like what are actually the issues that are facing the communities, what are the hazards in terms of flooding from coastal flooding, river flooding, etc. Uh, what types of services are available to us and what you would actually push for in terms of something like drainage or health or what is actually our priorities. And working with me this week on the one hand uh, collect data with um, uh, drones so make sure you have accurate up to date imagery of the area and then combine it with housing surveys uh, which is partly private data partly in the ozone uh, so you be you know be able to be much more effective in forcing data driven decisions at the government level. And the fourth one is uh, more kind of I'd say on kind of government engagements. Also working with governments to adopt open data systems. So uh, in Zambia recently we did uh, quite a bit of work with the government to help them use OSM data as the basis for census. Uh, it's kind of a related field we've also done we have a lot of work around public health and malaria elimination which also lies with our effort census data on the public uh, So that's just kind of a fourth Maybe area that we have a lot of work in. And in all of these, it's key to have like a, a, a robust and reliable tool chain of data from data collection or imagery to how you actually digitize the data, get it out and, and get it out again for analysis and, uh, and use. So, which is for hand over to Lane to see. Yes. So, I'm going to talk about exactly that, that, that tool chain and what yep. Bob is doing within that tool chain. So, Bob is known for task management. I think most people know Bob from, um, again, like Bob mentioned disasters after earthquakes or after flooding, where a massive amount of people use um, our task manager to collaboratively edit uh, OSM maps, basically adding buildings and adding roads. Um, this is like currently, and it's still super like heavily used. Um, we have like 430,000 members on this, we have unique members, we have 430,000 projects, 116 countries. Like, I mean, the numbers speak, speak for themselves. This is like a very actively used, like, platform, um, especially for like, collaboratively remote map. In practice, what this actually does for people that don't know, it's basically a coordination layer on top of ID. So basically it divides the world into or a project or an area into pieces and people map a certain area in collaboration. So people get assigned a task and they basically fix that task for their area. So that's kind of the current flagship product of HOT. And we still see that it's like very useful. Like it's still something we, we it's like are still our current business amongst that way. However, we also see there's a lot of changes happening in our ecosystem. And actually, if you look at the actual goal of HOT, is not to engage only remote mappers, but to really focus on local mappers. And this is really, at this moment, there's still a lot of remote mappers mapping across the map, which is great. But our goal, eventually, is to enable these type of people to use and create open map data in their, in their, in their worlds, right? So that they can improve their lives and livelihoods with open map data. So there's kind of a bridge to go from remote tasking manager to like a tool chain that enables those people to uh, use map data, create open map data, and use that for impact, be it uh, waste management, be it flooding, uh, be it mapping buildings, be it mapping solar panels, be it mapping water tanks in refugee camps. So all these things are like examples of things that are of use in those, in those uh, uh, situations. So what are the key bottlenecks we see for uh, community members to do so? We see four major challenges. One is open image and even image processing. Uh, we've recently seen that with Max are putting away their, um, their uh, exchanging their license uh, for, for use of OSM. So we see this as a key problem in our ecosystem the, the, that we, we don't want to be dependent on like any specific imagery provider. So we're trying to, to build out an open platform and I'll come to the solutions that we're, we're looking for that. But this is like a key, a key problem in our ecosystem, especially because Many of satellite providers, they don't necessarily are interested in our worlds. I mean, if they have to choose to direct their not here to a certain area in the world, they probably don't choose to do that more for areas, unless there's an open data program from NASA or specific reason to do so. But the first, the second challenge is to leverage AI and ML in the context. Um, so basically what that means, currently we do see uh, Meta, we see, we see Google, we see everybody using AI to feature selection from imagery. However, that's all closed models. The human is not in the loop of all that AI, um, uh, the AI feature extraction. What we're working on since a few years already is a uh, initiative called FAIR, where we basically use open AI models, like uh, like RAMP is one example. We're now 
at the overall, we're looking at a few other uh, models as well. But basically, the human is in the loop. The human trains the model. The human means the persons on the ground. They train their own model because they know better what actually is, yeah, what is a hut in Sudan. If you would ask to, you know, yeah, I only have five minutes. So that's, that's kind of one of the other challenges you see. The third challenge is a local view data collection, both organized and decentralized. There's a lot of applications. There's tons of applications out there. I mean, organic maps everywhere are more complex than here. We do see a gap there as well. The gap is that mm, very often in our countries, people come together too much. They're not just going to go map by themselves. Very often it's project for me. So we needed a, a way for people to collaborate on the field as well. So we created a uh, field mapping task in mind. And the last one, the big challenge we see as well is data access and use of OSM data. I think that's it's, it's a challenge for many. The challenge we see is to make that also very simple to use for an end user. Like again, imagine you're a community in a certain, like let's say you're in Nepal and you want to use OSM data. How do you, even if you, if you map that data, how do you get that? How do you actually use it uh, for your use case? So in essence, I'm going to just show uh, the project we're working on. One is open imaging and open image processing. As I mentioned, we're working on open drone tasking manager, which enables people to collaboratively, basically, they, they get assigned a white plan, uh, and then they, they, they all these white plans together, can be basically see them together, and you have up-to-date recent imagery, high resolution from the area. That can be done by local communities. They fly their own drones, like local drones. Uh, this is just a demo of the type of imagery you can get out of that, of course. Next big initiative is OEM, the event of the Dance, open area map. People can openly share their imagery, share and um, upload and share their imagery. We wanna, our ambition is to actually create the best open catalog available, that wherever you are on Earth, you actually know what imagery is there available, what licenses there are attached to it, how recent is it, uh, what resolutions, etc. so that people actually know what, what imagery there is available. And if there is no imagery available, they can still find their drones. First big scenario. This is again an example of Monrovia, where we have used an uh, open map, or again, you can basically upload your imagery, uh, open imagery, uh, with mobile license. Uh, on the way. This is what I've mentioned about ML AI with human group. We are this fair initiative where we, this is an example where we basically, the community members train the models. It's an open model, it's a whole workflow we work out, where basically community members can train the model, and then later on can also verify the models and change the parameters if they're knowledgeable about AI. If not, they just use standardized models that we propose, to send the parameters we propose. But in essence, it enables people to be in the loop of all that the AI exercises. It's not just like meta that is giving us AI features, the output, no, we've only, we, we don't include, include the human in the loop there um, in an AI process. Then there's field mapping task manager. As I mentioned, this is uh, a bit of the same concept as task manager and drone task manager. Again, the whole idea is you divide up an area into air sub-areas and you organize on, on the field and locally who's actually going to go map which area. So basically this is a coordination layer of the, the whole data that we're building. Uh, it's going to be launched very soon and it has been tested like a multiple project and so far it's been very well welcomed by our community and our, by our project managers. Lastly there's data access and data use. Some of you might know we have export tool, uh, raw data API and index and basically to be able to extract the data from uh, OSM and based on certain geography, uh, we have like 10 different file formats. It's really easy to use for anyone that doesn't want to go into over files or into like, not for non-developers, for people like make it very simple for people to use open, uh, open map data. We are building like we're continuously building open export tool and the next, um, sorry, the raw data API and the next like move we want to make. We're currently focused on static um, uh, formats. We want to move more into dynamic formats. And that's also like we're investing in as well from so to make sure that we also jump on that boat. Um, and then lastly, I want to show you how all these projects connected. This is like a view. This is not just us talking about some. I mean, this is an example of one of our team members in Nepal who is training uh, Nepalese students on how to fly drones, how to process the drones. We're using our open area map to share that imagery. We're using, um, at the moment, for drone docs management, but we're using uh, OGM to process the data like that. We have a this is an example of project Kenya, where we actually are uh, explaining to communities how they can actually use open AI models to train their own models to then have them to present this example of uh, Imam Robia, where we did a field map data collection with FMTM. Then, in a collaborative way, we organized groups of people to go and map in a certain slum. This was in Bali, uh, where we were working on a, in Bali, a project uh, on a landslide project where we worked with the local Balinese disaster uh, team and where they were using uh, raw data API to export uh, the data. Um, and lastly, 
but we also focus on how then eventually you use that map data, right? Uh, and, and this is mainly at the moment we're, we're working, we don't want to like be exactly for one tool or another, but QGIS is often used in those operations, but what we're really focusing on is on the data modeling side of things. Like what data do you need for what use case? So we're trying to support that from the end of the thing. So in essence, I just want to say we're not, like this seems all a lot of work, we're not doing this alone. Like Hope has a limited small team of, of technologists uh, and a great team, but basically we're working with Maxa and Heidi, Alondina, Opendrona, the Contra, or the KSF, they, they all work with us. I mean, they actually develop with us. Um, then we get support from many like big tech as well, as well as smaller big tech. We work with like all these like young leaks, uh, you see our young markets, etc. that are contributing as well to our technology stack. We are part of like network, networking in, uh, groups as well. And we have partners that share a similar mission to ours, where we collaborate with as well. So it's not like we're doing all this just ourselves. We're working together with all these people and volunteers to build out that uh, a tool chain that enables actually someone on the ground to go from data collection all the way to data use. And we try to focus on those key gaps that we see at the moment uh, in our ecosystem. And I am in time, I think. <laughs> 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 Any questions? <laughs> But it is something that should be integrating both in export tool at some point, thereby also into HDX um, and the fast disk uh, and also into DTM, etc. So that is stuff that's in, in the works. Yesterday, so <laughs> there's going to be a blog post yeah. if you have better patience. <laughs> we're, we're at a break now.